If you were of that age, at that time, you knew you were going to be in the war. I knew I didn't want the Army, that was money and that sort of thing. I knew I didn't want the Navy because that was in the water. So, no, I, I had, had a few, just a few, little bit of flying experience and I loved it. My name is uh, Theodore J. Van Kirk and I was a major. I probably, I think I probably flew about 15 missions out of England. And then I got transferred down to North Africa where I completed the rest of uh, 58, I believe. If you made 25 missions, you were either the luckiest person alive or the German pilots were lousy shots. In my case, the German pilots were lousy shots. I was down in New Orleans. I got a call from uh, uh, Tibbetts. I met Tibbetts before that, before I flew the first mission out of England. That was the best day of my life. He saved my life a couple of times. And uh, he says, I'm organizing a new group. He says, I can't tell you what it's about, but he says, uh, if it works, we're either going to end or officially shorten the war. And uh, he says, I want you to be my group navigator. I got orders to report to the uh, Silver Plate Project in Wendover, Utah. We trained primarily to make a, the rapid turn and running away from the bomb. That was our primary training. Well, that was our biggest worry, was getting away from the bomb. You know, how do you get away from a bomb? You drop the bomb, the, the bomb goes this way, you go this way, but you had to make a very rapid turn. Give us practice, he can make that turn in one, less than a minute. So you're at 30,000 feet now. He's in a 30, 60 degree bank, which is a very sharp bank for B-29 at that altitude. We knew the time was approaching and everything else because uh, they had had the test, the test explosions in uh, New Mexico. When, when they finally briefed us for the bomb, for the mission and everything else, they briefed us that we were going to go out and drop the atomic bomb and everything of that type and uh, go get some sleep. Now, how the hell they expected you to tell you you're going out and drop the first atomic bomb and then go get some sleep is beyond me. Tibbetts, Ferry, and I were in the same poker game. We obviously didn't sleep. We get down to the airplane, that's the first thing. It just says 245 comes in, why we take off? The first problem was getting off the ground. We were very heavily overloaded. Just before we hit to 10,000 feet, uh, Morris Jefferson went back into Bombay and uh, did the final arming of the bomb. And after that, says, didn't that make you nervous? I says, hell, I'm nervous already. What, what, how much more nervous could I get? And we're about 30,000 feet. I could see the, the outline of Japan for miles away. I went in, crossed Shikoku. I turned to the westerly heading and uh, called Tom Farabee and I say, if you can't see it now, you're blind. The city of Hiroshima is up there and you can see the bridge. That was, a, was our aiming point. took the bomb 43 seconds from the time we dropped it at 30,000 feet until the time it exploded at 18,000 feet. The first thing you saw was that large white cloud that was up well above our altitude. If you look down to the city of Hiroshima, it just looked like a pot of boiling oil covering the city. The world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima a military base. If Japan does not surrender, bombs will have to be dropped on her war industries, and unfortunately, thousands of civilian lives will be lost. But there was nothing celebratory about it at all, or anything. We're just dropping another bomb. Crowds gather in front of the White House, awaiting the announcement of Japan's surrender from President Harry S. Truman. 
The Japanese have just officially laid down their arms. They have signed terms of unconditional surrender. And the news triggered the greatest celebration the nation has ever known. It would have been another years before the war would have been over. The point is, we dropped the bombs and saved a lot of lives. We and the Japanese would have had a bloodbath if we had invaded Japan. And they knew we were coming. They knew where we, where we were going to land. And they had their guns waiting for us. A lot of the people went up to Japan after the war to uh, visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At Nagasaki, when we landed there, why uh, all the Japanese commander wanted to do was present his sword. He wanted to surrender and go home. But while in Nagasaki, I saw probably one of the saddest sights of the war. Uh, we were standing around just chatting, and uh, at a bus stop there in Nagasaki, the city was destroyed, leveled out. And the bus commandant stopped and everything else. And this Japanese soldier got off the bus looking for his home. What do you say to that man? It, it was a sad moment in my life. <laughs>